What's up guys? Welcome to 35th Ruby Tutorial. Let's continue our array basics and fundamentals of part 3. Now, here I have defined an array named A. It is having certain character values such as H E L L O W O R L D that is hello world. We can also define characters in our array guys. Now, let us print it. Print A. Let's save it and execute it. The array A is having hello world. Now, what if if you write like this? Bracket A, then square bracket 0, comma 5. Now let's save it and execute it. Yes, we get the output like this. Hello. Here, we are specifying the starting index 0. That is, our output will start from H and this 5 specifies the number of elements from the starting index 0 that is 5 1 2 3 4 5 so hello is just printed and world is not printed like this hello now let's specify our starting index as let's say minus 5 now let's save it and execute it yes world why because d has the index minus 1 then minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, then minus 5. From this W, we have to count 5 characters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, world is printed. Now, let's specify the range of values. Like 0, dot, dot, 4. Let's see what's the output. Here, we are specifying the index as starting from 0. And, the output is again hello. This is because this time we are specifying the range of index. Now, 0 is the starting index, then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the output is like this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we are getting the output as just hello. Now, let's try something as negative index, negative range of values, minus 5, dot, dot, minus 1. And what the heck I have done here? Where is W? Oh, it's by mistake, guys. No props. Hello, world. Yeah, let's now save it and then execute it. Yes, we are getting the output like this world. Why? Because the starting index is minus 5, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, then minus 1. So, minus 5 is W. Then, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, like this. So, at the end, we are getting the output as world. Now, guys, let me show you how to copy an array to an another array. Let's define an array b equal to array dot dot new. Now, within the braces, we just have to write our array name, which is to be copied into this array b. Now, here we want to copy our array a into b. Now, let's now right put s b let's save it and execute it yeah here we go we are getting the output like this because we have used a put statement here now here our array a is being copied into array b and finally we are printing this value of array b we are getting the output like this hello world now let us strike it off let's define b as 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 now, how to join two arrays? Earlier we saw that to join two arrays, we have to write C equal to A plus B. Yeah, so C will be like hello world, then 1, 2, 3, 4, like this. But we can use another statement to con concate two strings. Suppose we want to concate B at the end of A. So we have to use a syntax like this A dot concate then within the braces brackets we have to write b then suppose we're in print a then let's save it and execute it yes here we go hello world then at the end one two three four so we have successfully joined two arrays together a then b like that now suppose you want to delete an element so what syntax you have to follow just you have to write a dot delete then within the bracket you have to write the name of the element 
like suppose we want to delete H so let's now print A let's save it and execute it yeah here we go our element H is deleted now let's say now let's delete the element by specifying the index delete underscore at let's specify our index let's say 0 let us delete our H again what the heck what problem we are having with H <laughs> let's now save it and execute it yes again we go again at index 0 we have deleted the element now let's write let's find out the length of the array A let's write A dot size let's strike it off let's write put as a dot size let's save it and execute it yes the array a is having the size of 10th that is it is having 10 elements there is one more method guys to know the size of the array a let's say length let's save it and execute it it is again going to print the same thing 10 because 10 is the length of the array a now in order to know the contents of the array a we can also write a dot inspect let's now save it and execute it we will again get the output like this hello world this will show the content of the array a we can also use this inspect method to inspect our classes or objects or other variables it's not necessary that inspect is always used with the array you can check that out guys you just define a class then just write class dot inspect and see what output you are getting now let's move forward let's write a dot empty let's check it out what output it gives let's write put as a dot empty let's save it and execute it false this is a conditional method it is just asking is array a is empty the answer is false so the false is printed it returns a boolean value false now now let's use a shift method a dot shift put as a now let's see what effect this shift is having on the array let's save it this shift method is shifting all these elements to the left side by one so h gets terminated and the last position gets vacant so our array starts with e l l o w o r l d like this l o world so h is again deleted by shifting by this shift method now let's define another array like this let's say 5 comma 5 comma 4 comma 4 comma 3 comma 3 comma 2 pretty monotonous now let's use the function a dot equal question mark then within the bracket other array name now let's add a put a statement here let's save it and execute it here we go false this statement a dot equal b is comparing a and b if they are not equal then it returns a boolean function false and if two arrays are equal then it returns true so in that case true will be printed like this now let us change our array a let's change it to what let's say 1 comma 1 comma 2 comma 2 comma 3 comma 3 comma 4 like this now let's change this also let's write here now let us define another array c equal to a then I am using here a bar operator which is found below the backspace button b now let's save it and execute it sorry I have to write here put a c also put a C let's save it and execute it here we go all the duplicate data in array A will be removed that is two ones are there so one one will be removed two twos are there so one two will be removed similarly 
one three sorry one three will be removed and four will be remain as it is now let's come to b so five five will be printed here then again five is there so five won't be repeated again because it has been printed here so four is available in a array a so four won't come in output again this one then again three and two won't come in the output because these two are already printed as they are present in a now let's change the sequence let's write b bar sorry b bars a now let's save it and print it yes here we go again first we have to remove the duplicate data from the array b so 15 is removed from here then again 14 is removed from here 13 is removed and 2 is remaining as it is now again we have to come to array a so 1 is not present here and it is not printed yet so 1 will printed here at the end then again 2 is printed and 3 is printed and also 4 is printed so these four elements will be terminated like this now let's use suppose a ampersand b now let's save it and execute it here we go we get the output like this just because it is comparing the common elements of a with b first it is comparing one it is not available so it is terminated then again one is terminated then two then it comes to two then yes two is available in b also so two is printed then Two is already printed, so no need to print it again. Then comes to three. Three is present here, so three is printed. Then four. Four is present in B also, so so four is printed like this. Two, three, and four. Now, let's reverse the sequence. B ampersand A ampersand A. Now let's save it and execute it. Yes. Now in this case, first we start comparison with elements of array B like this. Five, it is not present in A, so not printed. This is also not printed. Four, yes, it is present, so printed. Four, it is already printed, so no need to print it again. Then comes to three. Yes, three is present here, so three is printed. Then two is printed like this. So things are pretty easy, guys. Very simple, very fundamental and basics of array. I I hope it is all clear in your minds. Catch you guys in next tutorial and stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.